For me, this is actually quite a short video. It runs just under 15, I'm looking at the times there, just under 15 minutes I think this runs for. Um, so yeah, uh, it's follow on from Breakout Part 1. If you haven't um, gotten Breakout Part 1, then the links are below to, to watch the video. Um, so yeah, in this one we're going to add the bricks to the wall that you need to break out of. I, I don't have anything else, that's all we're doing this week, is adding the bricks to the wall. And collisions, we do a bit of collisions as well. After the fade, I'm going to add a game object by dragging and dropping in the brick graphic into the scene. Now, it's placed at right bang in the middle of the scene, which is fine, but we don't really want it there because I'm actually going to use this as a template to build the brick wall. Now, what I could do is I could place that there and then press Control D and then keep going and, and then build a brick wall that way. I don't want to do that. I actually want to do this programmatically. So I'm going to create a, I'm going to use this to create a template and then use some scripts to build the wall for me. So I'm going to move this brick outside the play area. You see we actually have the, the play area delineated here by this white rectangle. So I'm going to move this outside the play area. So we're not, we're not going to see it. Uh, and I'm also going to add a box collider 2D. So this is going to be our template for every brick that we use inside the game. So making sure that I don't have anything selected, make sure you don't have anything blue here. Uh, so click outside there inside the hierarchy and choose create empty and I'm going to name this brick wall and this is going to contain our script, our component that will take our template here, our template game object and then create many instances of it to build our brick wall. So then we go down to our assets folder Go inside scripts and we are going to create a script called bricks. Uh, Unity is going to spin about and create that for us. And then I am going to drag and drop this component onto our brick wall game object. So you see that it's now been added there. And then when I double click it, it will open up in Visual Studio. There we go. This is our brick script. This is the one that will build our brick wall for us. So let's get rid of a few things first of all. We don't need the update method because, well, we're not gonna update anything. We're only ever going to, to create a static brick wall. We're not gonna be moving any of the bricks. We're just going to set it up when we start. So the first thing is we need to have a reference to our template. Now our template object is already in the scene, so we can have a reference that all we need to do is just um, create a public field of game of type game object and then we can reference that. So we're gonna drag and drop the brick template onto this field in the inspector. And we're also gonna need an array of colors. Now, there's going to be a graphic coming up on the screen right about now. Our brick wall is going to be made up of these colours here. So we're going to have a red row, a green row, a blue row and a yellow row. And they're all going to be stuck together because that's how the old breakout game used to look. All right. Now we're going to use a couple of for loops. Our outer for loop is going to go down each row and our inner for loop is going to add bricks on each column of each row. And we're going to use a method called instantiate, which is built into mono behavior to make a copy of our brick template up here. And we, we'd actually do it with just one line of code, uh, the instantiate. Uh, after that, we're going to set the position and the color of our brick. So our two for loops look like this. <clears throat> so 
So this is our outer for loop here, and this is our inner for loop. The reason why this is called the outer for loop is because it's on the outside, and this is the inner for loop because it's on the inside of another for loop. There you go, inner and outer for loops. Um, and each time we go through our loop, uh, we're going to start off on row zero, and we're going to go through to row three because this is our condition here. Y is less than four. So we have zero, one, two, three, which gives us four. I'll do that again. Zero, one, two, three, which gives us four positions. And then our X is going from zero to one value less than five. So that's zero, one, two, three, four. So that gives us five. So we have uh, four rows and five columns in each row. That's us made a copy of our brick. So we took our brick template and we called instantiate on it and that gives us a copy. Now we move it to uh, its new position. And each brick is three units in size. So that's gonna be X by three because we want to move it three units at a time because we know if we did that one unit at a time we just end up with a very very short wall and it'd be overlapping uh, and then we're going to go backwards so we're going to start at, at um, y is equal to four and then we're going to go up the way um, we don't have to do it that way we could do it any other way but it just uh, I don't know I just felt like doing it that way um, but we actually have an offset here because we want to move everything shifted over six units to the left so that we are starting um, on the left hand side so that by the time we get to the end of a brick wall it's it's symmetrical across the, the uh, origin where x is zero, sorry, the line where x is zero. So vector three and then we're going to specify zero there. Okay, so this is our offset here. So this never changes. These are constant values here. Uh, and these values here obviously vary depending on what values of X and Y are there. And lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to change the color per, uh, based on what row it's on. Now, how do we know what row it's on? Well, we've actually got our integer Y up here, which we're going from 0 to 4. So we're going to go from 0. So this is our 0th element our first element, second element, third element, and we have 0 to 3 here, so this, that's why we have those colors. So I was saying that the game object, in the, la in the last video I mentioned that the game object just contains components. To, to get a component, all you need to do is just call the get component function and specify what type of component you want. In this case we want a sprite renderer and that will return our sprite renderer and put it into this value here. If this doesn't if this object here doesn't have a sprite renderer, this will return null, so render will contain the value null. So you should check it, but we know that sprite render exists, so we don't need to, to check it in this case. that's it. That's as uh, we are specifying the, the color of our brick. Now this is going to be constant for, you see that the y is constant while all of this is going on. So our y value is equal to 0. So x is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then our y value updates. And then we do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 all over again. That's our outer loop, our 0 to 4. And our inner loop is our 0 to 5. That's why we have a constant color. Uh, we have our, each row will have a constant color. So each row, every brick will be yellow in the, that row or it will be red or whatever the, the row is. So running this, we need to, well, before we run it, uh, brick wall has a brick template field. We need to 
specify our brick template. So we want this brick here to be set to this, sorry, this value here needs to be set to that brick. So if we click and drag and just drop it in there and save the scene and then when we run it we will end up with our brick wall. We're going to get the same issue that we had before where the collisions work but they don't do what we thought they were going to do. So remember when we we initially started uh, and we got the, the, the ball to hit the paddle, it stuck to the paddle uh, and it was only when we changed a bit of code that it actually bounced off the, the paddle and then back up the screen. So we're going to have to do some changes here as well. So the collisions are working but not doing what we want it to do in the game. So back to our code here. So our bricks are done. That's it. We don't need to change any more code inside bricks. But if you go to move ball, you see that we have our on collision 2D. So that works, that's fine, but that only happens when the tag is equal to the player. But we actually wanted to do the same thing if the ball hits uh, a brick as well. So we're going to move this outside here. Now, when a ball hits a brick, we want to remove it from the wall because the whole point of the game is to destroy the wall, move on to the next level, the ball speeds up, it's a bit faster. So we want to make sure that if it doesn't hit an object that's a player, sorry, if it does hit an object that isn't a player, then we're going to destroy that object. So we only want to destroy something that's not the player. So instead of the double equal sign, which means equal to, we want to change that to not equal to, which is our exclamation mark and then an equal sign. So that's we're making sure that this is not equal to the player. So any other object that we hit, not equal to the player, we're going to destroy that object. So to destroy an object, you use the destroy method, and then you specify the object. Well, what object did we collide with? Well, it just so happens that our collision 2D object here uh, is given by this, this parameter C. It actually contains the game object that we struck. So. If we hit a brick, or if we hit the paddle, we want to reverse the Y direction. So we want to bounce the, 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 the ball in the opposite direction. If we didn't hit the player, we must have hit a brick. And if we did hit a brick, destroy that game object. So now, if I go back to our... So now if I go back to our scene, and I hit play, we get our bricks, we get our ball, we get our paddle. And if I bounce this up the screen, we get our bricks working. So if you like the video, then give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a big thumbs down and write some comments down below there. Um, if you want to get timely reminders of when there's new videos up, then please subscribe. Uh, you don't have to do any of this stuff, uh, you can quite happily mosey on down and just completely ignore this and just take all the, the, the videos you want. There's plenty more videos uh, about Unity and other things as well on the website if you're interested. Uh, on my channel thing, whatever it's called. So yeah, thanks very much for uh, for watching anyway, I know your time's valuable. Um, so yeah, until next time. Oh, uh, I should tell you what's happening next time. Um, Next time, we're going to be adding some sounds to the mix. So when the ball hits the paddle, the walls, the bricks, um, we're going to get some feedback because everyone likes a bit of audio. So until next time, thanks very much.